Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Oxford Baptist Church this morning. This morning, we have got a, an exciting uh, time that we're going to be sharing together. And we're going to be having testimonies. Uh, we're going to be look, reminiscing about uh, some of the, the favorite things in, our, in the past. We're going to be taking a look at what God has been doing in people's lives here at Oxford, as well as what people are looking forward to when we uh, are in our new facility out on uh, 59 North. And uh, so this, this morning, we're going to be uh, looking at living stones and a chosen people. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 4. The living stone and a chosen people. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Greetings from Penticton, British Columbia. In a small way, Laura and I appreciate what you are going through right now as you get ready for your big move. It was a year ago that we left Ontario and had our big move as we came to uh, British Columbia to be with our daughter and her family. We appreciate having the opportunity of being able to speak to you on the eve of this uh, leaving of uh, the corner of Oxford and uh, Hunter Streets. To think that you have been in this part of Woodstock for 130 years is quite amazing. It speaks to the faithfulness of our God and to the faith faithfulness of his people. To administer through the turbulent 20th century with two world wars and with the Great Depression and uh, in latter years, the uh, turmoil with the cultural shifts, uh, this speaks to the goodness of our God and to the resilience of his people. It was an honor for Laura and I to uh, have a small part in your long and storied history. It was uh, 40 years ago in 1981 that we, along with our two children, made the move to Woodstock and uh, were able to pastor there for, the, uh, for six years. These were happy and rewarding years for our family. As I look back, there are a number of things that I appreciate uh, about having been with you for that brief period of time. One was the opportunities to share God's word in various settings, the adult Sunday school class, uh, prayer meeting, uh, the Sunday by Sunday pulpit ministry, and even the uh, weekly times that we would have with some of the young men at the Food Right restaurant on, on a morning studying God's word. And of course, the re receptivity of God's people to God's word uh, was a great encouragement to, to me and to Laura. Also, I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned while I was at Oxford Baptist, uh, pastoring in a well-established church uh, in a smaller Ontario center. It was helpful to me as I uh, later became a pastor to pastors and was able to pass on some of the things that I learned while being with you. Well, as for family, George has mentioned that about our move to beautiful Penticton, located in BC's Okanagan Valley. It was a big decision to make, but we have absolutely no regrets. We're very happy here. And we appreciate those people at Oxford Baptist Church those many years ago who had input into the lives of our children. They were going through their teenage years at that time while we were in Woodstock and the seeds that were sown in their lives way back then are still bearing fruit today. Richard presently is directing Swiss branch, the Swiss branch of Labrie Fellowship in Waymo, Switzerland, a residential ministry to inquiring, seeking, questioning young people. He and his wife, Karen, and their two adult children have been in Switzerland now for 21 years. Kathy and her husband, Jeff, and their three adult children have been in uh, Penticton, British Columbia, for well over 20 years. She is now a grandmother of a cute little two-year-old girl. We're so thankful that Kathy and her family are walking with the Lord, and they're just such a blessing to us. And when we look back over the many influences that people have had in their lives, we know it's just the grace of God that they are where they are, and we're just very thankful. Besides what I've mentioned, one of the things that stood out to me about our time in Woodstock with you folk was the passion that Oxford Baptist Church had for missions. Oxford was heavily invested in so many different ways in the spread of the gospel around the world. I believe that this is one of the reasons that God has continued to bless the ministry of this church, both in Woodstock and beyond. May you never lose this desire to see people around the world and locally come to know the Lord Jesus in a personal way. As I think of the move that uh, you're about to take and the building that you're leaving behind, my mind goes back to the days 
in the early 1980s uh, when we had the renovations and the addition that took place. This was an exciting time, but it was also a time of divided attention. Building is never an easy time, and it's important to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and the ultimate task that he has left us to, to perform, and that is to draw people to himself. And it's also important to remember that you're leaving the corner of Oxford and Hunter, uh, that the building is not the church. You yourselves are the church. And we would encourage you to be the church wherever you are, especially in the immediate communities in which you live. Within the last few days, I have been uh, thinking about a particular verse in uh, Galatians chapter six and it's verse nine. And it says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And might I add, if we don't become sidetracked. May you continue to know God's blessing, his leading and his sustaining grace as you head into the future and eventually into your new building. We pray that that would be a source of tremendous uh, blessing to you as a congregation and to the uh, County of Oxford. The Lord bless you.
privilege and blessing of being a part of the Oxford family from 2008 to 2013, along with our two kids, Marissa and Isaac. Yeah, and we're at a different stage of life now, with Marissa being married for two years just about, and Isaac having just finished up a four-year Bible school degree and has now moved out. And I guess that's kind of the theme, is uh, moving for you as a church family, and we are thrilled for you. In fact, one of our memories of Oxford is arriving to see the the original building plans uh, to connect the old church and the school and uh, just working through those years of coming to the realization that God had a different plan in mind that we're thrilled to hear is now um, moving on to the next step. Uh, and then we're asked just to share a couple of the highlights of our time at Oxford. And one of them certainly is uh, a number of the, the dramas and puppet shows and getting to uh, do a lot of fun things building sets and having sheep on the stage and being talked into all sorts of crazy things. Uh, but the the main highlight for us in all sincerity is just the great people that we had a chance to uh, build friendships with and to serve alongside um, in the leadership of the church, the staff, the board. Uh, that just was an incredible blessing to us. And um, now we were just asked to share one encouragement and Philippians 1.6 came to mind. Um, that just says, I'm confident of this, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And I think usually we think of that as a, uh, a verse that is applicable to us as individuals, that God is working out my individual salvation. But in Philippians, it's actually uh, a statement made for church that God is going to carry out his purpose and bring that purpose to completion for a church family. And so we are excited and we're very confident and hopeful for you as a church that God is going to continue to work out his purposes for you. So uh, we trust it's a wonderful move and we will be praying for you. There have been times where I've gone on Facebook and it showed me memories of things I've posted on that day in previous years. These memories, such as maybe photos or videos or uh, just maybe some comment or an article, uh, most of them make me smile, I'll be honest. But sometimes they have a more profound emotional effect when I see a note or a picture or what I might call a hard memory. But even through those, I'm reminded of God's faithful presence during these difficult circumstances. These uh, Facebook memories are like the stones of remembrance that are in the Bible. And uh, it's interesting, as you look at the scriptures, we, we often are prone to forget the things that God has done for us over the years. We need reminders. When Joshua led God's people towards their new home, they had to cross the Jordan River, as we understand in, in Joshua chapter 3. God parted the waters there, and his people walked through on dry land, verse 17. To create a memorial of this miracle, they took 12 large stones from the middle of the riverbed and stacked them on, uh, on each other, it says. And um, so that when others asked as they went by there what those stones meant, God's people could tell the story of what God had done that particular day. I want to call those, first of all, uh, the Lord's legacy stones. Now, if you take time to read through Joshua chapters 3 and 4, you see that Joshua used these stones to help God's people remember his goodness and faithfulness to them. After wandering in the wilderness for four years because of their disobedience, the Israelites experienced the power of God to roll back the waters of the Jordan River enabling them to cross over and take possession of the promised land. Joshua then commanded them to build these, this pile of memorial stones as a public testimony of what God done, had done for them. Stones that would remind them, notice this, to keep on praising God. 
Just the other day, uh, Tony and I were here at the church, and then I had to leave, and then Tony took out the cornerstone from our 1962 uh, building. And uh, after uh, that day, we, we, we took it out, and it will arrive at our new property at some point in time. And it will join also uh, a cornerstone that we'll make for those who started the church back in 1890. And then hopefully in 2022, we'll have a cornerstone with the new building. But let's listen to some of the stories of people's favorite memories at Oxford. These stories are just a few of the many stories of God's blessings through the ministry of Oxford at this time. And for those of you who are watching, uh, you can also contribute to this record by uh, telling those stories in the chat box in Facebook or on our other platforms. Enjoy these. Well, actually, there's several, but you know, it's hard to put it down to just one when you've been there as long as I have. I think one of the most significant was the fact that we got married at Oxford and I was an outsider. I wasn't from this area or from the church. And so the church really made me feel welcome. I was really overcome by how much they uh, welcomed me, made me feel like a part of the church. And then another memory was the fact that uh, my wife and I both worked at the church at the same time. She worked as a secretary for a number of years. And, uh, and then uh, when I retired, I took on the job of uh, custodian and uh, maintenance guy and worked there until she retired. We worked together. So those are good memories of the church. The ladies' retreats and, and ladies' teas and the young adult family camping. It was nice to see whole families together and fellowship together. And we had Sunday school under the tree. And we had young adult hikes led by Lloyd Gasso on the Bruce Trails. And we lived on, a, before this, we lived on a farm across from the South Sora Baptist Church. Ladies came over and invited us kids to Sunday school, and that's how we got started there. But our Oxford Airs Quartet from Oxford Baptist sang at this little country church. And on the way home, my mom had no idea, but she said, if we ever move to Woodstock, we're going to Oxford Baptist. That's where the quartet is. I'll tell you, I used to, I used to look after the lunch. I looked after the lunch for years and years and years, and and the f and and the funerals and and the, I was and I put on the young people's um, banquets at Christmas time, and and that's what I used to do, and I looked after the funerals and that, and I don't know, I hate to say how many years I was in that. Because yeah. they even gave me a certificate mm -hmm. that I got after I quit. And I sort of quit, well, I think when, more or less when I took sick in 207, I think I'd, I'd given up maybe a little before then. But after that, then I didn't. And then, well, and I also looked after the Agape lunch for years and years with Joyce Gashel and that. Uh, that was, that was my, that was, okay. I guess that was my thing in the church. Well, I did babysit and I also worked in the, um, um, in Pioneer Girls. And, you know, Linda and I taught Sunday school for a few years for the, I think it was the four and fives in that. But, um, I don't know. It was, it, I, I just grew up in the church, you know. I was 12 years old when we come here and, and that. So, you know, I I grew up that with a teenager and, and not in the church. Okay. Well, I would say the uh, young adults uh, camping and canoeing weekends and, and even the Sunday school classes, they, you know, we went on hikes and stuff. 
think that's the part I would remember. Okay. My favorite was yeah. the, the young adults, we used to always get together once a month, and then the, we had always such a good group, and we got to know each other, and that was my favorite, of the young adults, and Sunday school. We used to have great Sunday school contests when Pastor Latimer was here, and I won a rabbit. <laughs> and I got didn't last very long because we had too many rabbits. <laughs> but no, we had great Sunday school contests. And I had one year I learned a hundred verses and I got sent to camp two different years by learning verses. Those are the things I remember. I think the people, the pastors we've had, a, a number of pastors in that length of time, um, the um, programs, the children's, we used to have children's uh, uh, what were they called? Musicals. <laughs> musicals, children's musicals, which our children were involved in. And of course, they, they all grew up in the church. and But I think mostly the people, the people that have gone on before us now, and, but that it's, it's just been wonderful to know those people and, uh, and the people that are here now, of course, will move with us. So that's a good mm -hmm. thing too. Well, I would say the most favorite or the biggest highlight of the 51 years is seeing our daughter married in this church. It was a, a very emotional, important thing for her, and it certainly was for us too, because uh, she grew up in the church and was part of many youth uh, activities, particularly with our interns. We had three interns, and she was very involved in summer programs with those, but just to see her walk down the aisle and marry Andrew was a, a significant highlight for me. Uh. There, there can't possibly be just one. <laughs> there, actually, I, I'll tell you, uh, this, I'd be talking mostly just about our early years when we first okay. came to uh, Oxford Baptist Church. And the year was 1958. Would you believe that? Uh, seems so long ago. But here was my husband completing his eighth year of studies. Uh, mm -hmm. We went first to Minneapolis, and we studied at Billy Graham was the president there at Northwestern, and Gord got his uh, degree there in, I can't even think of the name of the degree, anyhow, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then he, he came back to study at Central Baptist Seminary and completed another four years there. So I, I begin with that because that just introduces the fact that there's a group of men come from Woodstock to interview Gord, and they were quite positive they would like him to uh, come and be their pastor. And we had just been praying about this and that God would give us direction because Gord was thinking of different areas and uh, but he really was most suitable for pastoral ministry, I believe. And that's why God uh, brought him to Woodstock. But uh, there was so much going on because he was just graduating in the year, I think I already mentioned, was 1958. And there was so much uh, different things going on there. But not only that, I had a baby due in the uh, 1st of June. so to ask me, you know, of one event. <laughs> I mean, it was just everything happening to us. And it was so exciting. I had not had a stove. I've been cooking all those years on a hot plate on a second floor where, you know, we went very flush. And here I was, we were with the whole parsonage and, uh, Empty house, hardly anything <laughs> put in it, but there we were. <laughs> and uh, we thought we were just living in the best of the best. But anyhow, that started uh, many wonderful years. And as you realize, we even came and retired back in Woodstock because we grew to love the people here. We thought we don't want to stay in Toronto anymore. We've had it. Let's go back to where we have wonderful friends and committed people 
all around us. So that's why we came back. Uh, the thing was, uh, Oxford was calling Gordon to be a pastor. And you know, I didn't even know where Woodstock was. Everybody would say, well, it's over, it's close to London, you know, as if that would do it. But without a 401 highway, it was difficult to find. We had to jig and jog and drive out of Toronto on number two. There was not much talk when they gave Gord an invitation to come about building a new church. That was kind of, you know, we had a nice little church there and it was adequate and nice little choir loft over in the corner and the church was filling with uh, young people and we needed Sunday school place. How, how can you be teaching all these children? And we had no area to do this teaching. So, oh, not a, not a problem. There's a little lot next door with a little house on it. Yeah, it's been used as Sunday school now. But hey, we can, uh, this little house can be moved. That's what it can do. And so they moved it. And actually, Glenn and Mary Taylor were living there then because they had started the work at Huron Park. We're big connection to that church. A lot of our people went to get that work started. And now it was time for us to build. So the little house got moved right down the road and away and found another home. <laughs> and that's how they did it. So talk about an exciting time. It was all exciting. Just all one thing after the other. And we sense God's being, God be himself being part of that because the men were all committed, the young couples were all committed, and they were doing their best to uh, spread the finances together so we could go ahead. So where that little house sat, we put up a Christian Ed building three stories high, and they built in the basement, you know, yourself what it is like now but an adequate basement a gym and we started having our church services down there and then in time progressed and the old building had to be removed and new structure that is there now put up so it was just an exciting exciting time now uh, moving forward a little bit, Gord got to know the other uh, pastors in this town and they, they had a little ministerial group going and they had the vision to start having uh, radio broadcasts and Gord said, well, we're going to be building a new church. There's a place to have that right from our building and we can hook up at any time to broadcast if if there's no one else willing and sometimes there was a lack of enthusiasm i think for the other churches uh, getting behind this to have the broadcast done and so it ended up that gord was on the radio almost every sunday because it was so convenient they didn't have, they could come in, set up in no time. It was off site. It could be observed from the platform. So it just, it just worked wonderfully well for that service to be ongoing. And I think the Lord blessed that ministry as well. In fact, many years later, when Gord was on staff at uh, OBC, he was Dean of Students actually, many years after that, there were young couples wanting to have him uh, conduct their weddings. And uh, if we didn't end up one time in Stratford, Ontario, to take a service. And I noticed Gord after the wedding ceremony, talking just with all this enthusiasm to uh, one of the couples that was at the wedding and here I overheard them saying, oh, 
I would know this man anywhere. And they were talking to my husband. Well, they recognized his voice because they used to have the radio in the barn and they'd be out doing the milking and listening <laughs> to our Sunday morning services all those years ago. And so we got a, a chuckle out of that. I moved uh, to Woodstock from Sudbury. My dad had had a heart attack and my mother's family was in Woodstock. So we moved to Woodstock and I was 15. And uh, so anyway, uh, we, my mother uh, found Oxford Baptist and, and we all went there. And uh, at that time, the very old church had a pump organ that you had to pump with your feet. And uh, oh my, that's something. And anyway, I thought, well, I'd, I'll have to learn to play the organ. And so I started going uh, about eight o'clock in the morning for an hour and practicing. And uh, well, then very shortly after that, they got an electric organ. So that was really neat. Well, then I had to learn to play the foot pedals. <laughs> and so I needed more practice. And uh, it was just, uh, so exciting to be learning that and what and sometimes i'd play at church but i was nervous i was <laughs> really nervous when i had to play and anyway part way through those years joanne gorham moved to woodstock i don't know if you ever met her uh she came to woodstock and she was a soloist singer uh, a very good soloist and an excellent pianist. And I can remember one day I was at the piano and I looked down and there was Joanne Gorham sitting there. I started to shake. <laughs> I was so nervous playing in front of her. Anyway, uh, so I got to know Joanne and, and actually she asked me to be her regular pianist every time she had to sing uh, to play with for her. Well, that did a lot for me, uh, you know, to, to get used to doing it. And uh, anyway, it, that got me into really into playing. And uh, yeah, the, uh, so that was the start. And then I was baptized uh, in the, about the next year, I think it was. And, uh, yes, I was a nurse by that time. And, uh, so it was just exciting to be, you know, to have a church and, and be part of it and working in it. If I think about my memories at Oxford Baptist Church, I can think of a rich history with family. I think of my grandparents, Philip and Gwen Buckrell and Frank and Eileen Making. I think of times as a kid going camping with church members. I think of going to kids club. Um, I think of a period where I didn't attend church, but the call of God brought me back and the joy at seeing so many of the familiar faces that I saw growing up. My most recent memory will be of my dad and the last time that he was at the church and he was serving. And I think about that often that um, even on his last day there, he was ushering and serving God. And that is our call is to serve and to disciple. I think so many favorite memories at Oxford. I don't know how many there was, too many to count from uh the maple syrup debate between uh, Pastor Don and uh, Jason Gervais and whether Aunt Jemima or, or the real stuff was the only way to go. And I think one of my favorite memories was when I watched my, my young niece, Hannah Buckrell, get up and get baptized. And, and Jason Gervais had had a very, uh, a sermon that really spoke to me personally just before that. And I was wanting to get baptized, but I just, 
I was trying to decide when and if I could do it. And when I saw Hannah get up, that just gave me the inspiration. And when I come out of church that day and I told Leroy Buckroll that I was getting baptized, the look and joy on his face, the happiness, it was just, that was one, that's my favorite memory is seeing the look on his face when I said, I'm going to get baptized, Leroy, and then finally getting baptized and taking that step. And wow, that was, that's my favorite memory. My favorite memory by far is the ladies Bible study that I participated in. I met so many amazing ladies and there was a core group of us, but people came and people left depending on the season of life they were in. And we just had such a fantastic time getting to know each other, being involved in each other's lives, supporting each other, learning about the Bible. And it was just an amazing time. And I'll always cherish that time together and be thankful for those ladies. Jeff, what is your favorite memory of Ox River Baptist Church? All our friends. What's your favorite memory of Ox River Baptist Church? Kings, kids, and uh, BBS. And what are all the VBSs that you went to? I went to Cave Quest, Time, Time Lab, uh, Incredible Race, and Mystery Island. Do you have a favorite of those or all of them? All of them. My name's Grace McKee. My favorite thing. My favorite thing. This is a message from Shirley Enns. Her favorite memory of Oxford is teaching Sunday school to four, and four to five year olds and singing in the church choir. Some of our favorite memories at Oxford are our wedding and all the people that were able to attend and, and bless us during that and uh, being able to get baptized on a Sunday morning and having family there. I remember Esther Bartley and Melissa Jansen uh, getting a group of young women together to start a women's Bible study. Some of those women are my closest and dearest friends, uh, and we still communicate and raise our kids together and pray together to this day. I also remember lots of fun times at youth with Pastor Jason. That's how Nate and I actually met and all the fun that we used to it have was me. and all the fun we used to have in the Victoria school in the basement and painting the youth room which took hours singing and i like having school Sunday school in the basement in the basement and and greeting i hope you enjoyed those stories and thank you for all of those who contributed to those stories in the chat box as well. I enjoy hiking and getting out in nature. And on all of my walks at different times, I found some unique things. I was reminded as I was cleaning out my office this past week that uh, my grandparents many years ago, uh, on one of their trips out west, stopped by Lake Superior. They were taking that trip out after they retired and they picked up a black stone, a small black stone that I still have in my office and my uncle polished it up for them as a reminder of their trip. I still don't know how I got it, but it reminds me of the lessons my grandparents taught me, but also they modeled those lessons in their lives. Samuel used stones as a memorial when God's people wanted to remember God's goodness and faithfulness. In 1 Samuel 7, 12, it says that God enabled the Israelites to defeat the Philistines. And the prophet Samuel took a stone and named it Ebenezer, saying this, Thus far has the Lord helped us. It's a beautiful picture of the faithfulness of God. We have a stone outside of our church. Uh, it's an Ebenezer stone. Uh, it was put there in the year 2000 at basically the 110th anniversary of our church. Uh, Brian and Carol Stewart were here on staff at that time. And we're taking that stone with us as well to remind us 
of the faithfulness and goodness of God. You see, only what the Lord does through us lasts. And in Luke 19.40, Jesus said, if we keep quiet and don't praise God, the stones will cry out. You and I cannot be silent. We need to understand that there is such joy in praising God for what He has done. We are to count our blessings and we are to praise Him. Think about your life for a moment. What spiritual lessons have been taught to you in your time at Oxford Baptist Church? Let's listen to some testimonies of the spiritual impact that God has made over the years. But you can also comment as well in the chat box. Tell your brief story of spiritual impact at Oxford. Well, I think as you grow, a young man, uh, you got to learn to uh, be sensitive to the feelings and, and opinions of other people. And uh, also at the same time, be looking to for the leading of God in your life. I can remember years ago, we used to have what we call a men's retreat. And every fall, all the men that were able would come and we'd go to a, a camp or a resort or somewhere and, and have a weekend together. We'd have some fun, we'd have some recreation, but mostly we'd share and have prayer and Bible studies and, and really get to know each other. And, and it really helped me to grow spiritually to take in some of those men's retreats. And the spiritual uplifts, uh, Doug and Esther Bartley, hosted and taught us young adult Sunday school class. And once a month we had a social. And I, en I enjoy the small groups at the church right now too. Small groups is the way to go. And we've always had excellent pastors giving good messages all these years. I started Oxford in 1954. I was um, in grade eight. Well, you know, that's sort of a hard question. I think more or less that you have a whole church that you fully enjoy to go to. And we've had really, in the years, we've had fairly good ministers. And I think that makes a big difference in your life. And that makes you, that makes you want to go. Your heart feels the Holy Spirit works in you. That, that's where you have to be. Okay. I, I said that the church was my whole life, really. Mm -hmm. And that without the church, you know, I think I would be lost in that. And in all the people, the good people you meet the, in that, I think makes a big difference <laughs> in that. Well, I'd have to say is, uh witnessing to other people. I've witnessed to some of the neighbors here, you know. So I'd say that's what it would be. Yeah. And mine, I think I have to say that God, we have a great and awesome God. And I think about when he went to that cross, he could have come down off that cross, but he stayed there because he loved us so much that he stayed on that cross. And that song always keeps coming to my mind. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I'm happy all the day. That's my favorite. Well, I was raised in the Anglican Church and very used to the ritual and uh, really liked that. I had a hard time getting over that when I came here, but I realized I needed to have a personal relationship with God and Jesus, and I think that's the biggest lesson I learned here. Well, I think the importance of the family of God, really, it's, it, it is a family. Uh, the uh, many pastors that uh, we go way back to Len Jones that you wouldn't even remember or even think of, and, uh, and through the Georges, we got baptized, uh, Bev and I, on Easter Sunday in the mid-70s. 
And, uh, you know, it's the fact that the church has never deviated from the truth. It's always been the same for 130 years, I, I presume, and it's still carrying on with, with the truth. Over the years, well, I mean, I was, uh, as they say, just in my, yeah, early years, I'm in my 20s, and uh, I, I got baptized when I was 15 there. And uh, the exciting part was knowing that God loved me so much. And even though I was, knew I was a sinner and that I had, uh, I couldn't be perfect. I couldn't live up to it, even though I tried so hard. And it was just so exciting to know God sent Jesus and he died on the cross to pay for my sins. So that was, in those years, that was really exciting. And it still is. You just, it seems a long time ago when we went all through that. Her spiritual memory is a time her husband and her had a special answer to prayer. She says, I am still thankful in learning about the faithfulness of the Lord.
So we've looked at the Lord's legacy stones. We see that in Joshua chapter 3 and, and chapter 4 as the Lord blessed the people of God. And just like that, God has blessed us. But we've also understood that the Lord's lessons stones is really the second part where uh, we see God at work and like Samuel, we uh, have our memories of the spiritual impact that this church has made in our lives. The third thing I want to talk about today is the Lord's living stones. Think for a moment of, you know, when you were younger, or maybe you're older like me, where I still will pick up a stone or two and just throw it in a river to see if I could skip it. Or maybe you were like me and grew up in the country where you were allowed a slingshot and you could hit some targets with it. Uh, you had flying stones, but not living stones. In the Bible, there are people that would worship sacred stones. Um, that's not what God wants us to do. There was also precious stones, and precious stones were used in the building of, of uh, the temple and other places, and we see precious stones that point us to heaven as well and what God has in store for us there. We also know that stones were used as weapons to stone people. But we also know that even today, people will carry a stone around for good luck, or they will also go to certain places in the world and worship stones there. But what they have done is really missed out. They have committed idolatry, and they've missed out on Jesus Christ, who is our solid rock, our living rock, the chief cornerstone of our life. In 1 Peter chapter 2, Barry read for us of Jesus being the living stone and we being his chosen people. It's an important aspect for us to understand that uh, as you and I come to him, who is the living stone, he's just not a stone, he is a living stone. We have rejected him so much but we, then God chooses us because we are precious to Him. And then verse 5 of 1 Peter 2 says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Here as living stones, we need to understand that we are to be a holy priesthood that we are a people that are, are called into the priesthood of all believers, living stones, to carry out our ministry together. In verse 6 it says, For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Peter personalizes what has been given to us in the Scriptures that Jesus Christ is the living stone. He is the rock of our salvation. And yet people reject him. It says there in verse 8, they stumble because they disobey the message was also which what they were destined for. But then I just love the last few verses of that passage. It says this to us, that as believers in Jesus Christ who have trusted in the living stone, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and notice this, God's special possession. Or as in other passages in the Old Testament talk about, we are His treasured possession. So that we may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, 
but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. See, as living stones in Jesus Christ, we worship Him and minister for Him. You know, we've had some fantastic followers of Jesus Christ down through the years who have helped this church move forward generation by generation. That's why the theme of these next few years together is transformation for generations. You see, just like those people who started the church in 1890, just like those who continued through the, the First World War, the Depression, the Second World War, through all the different crises down through the decades and the church built here again in 1962, we have the responsibility, those who us who are now the living stones of Jesus, to continue on and to create the future as we listen and obey the Lord. He has a preferred future for this church. But we have much to do. Our mission is to make disciples. And like our slogan says, a relationship with Jesus Christ changes everything. But the vision of our mission is transformation for generations to come. Listen, as a few people speak about what they're looking forward to as we shift our ministry to our new ministry base out on Highway 59. You can also, in the chat box, uh, think about the future or, or just write something in about what your hope is for the future of Oxford Baptist Church. Well, at my age, I'm, I'm just hoping I'm going to see it, but I'm looking forward to the fact that it's going to be a new building and all on the same level. Uh, and lots of parking to be able to. I can remember we were around when the church that we're in now was built. We were married in the old sanctuary, and then it was torn down. And a nice new building was built, and we thought that was wonderful. It had lots of room in it, but now here we are. We're looking forward to, praise God, the more room for more people to come and, and uh, become part of us. And I'm looking forward to the new building, the same as Bill, all on the level. But I'm hoping our country neighbors will come, too. Well, if the Lord gives me enough years... I will be glad just to see the new church. <laughs> you know, I I don't know how many more years the Lord is going to give me, but I'm hoping I'm still here when we are able to go there. That's that's my biggest that's my biggest prayer. <laughs> Growth, I would say. Get more people coming out interested. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah. Well, it would be growth, but I think we have to learn to follow God's leading too and not just go for growth. We have to be a great witness in the area and the community and be good to be all nice back together as one group. Well, I shouldn't say this, but there is a person on our building committee who would be disappointed if I didn't say it, I think. I want to live long enough to be able to walk into that new building. <laughs> um, and then the, the ministries will go with us and we'll carry on, hopefully. Well, I guess uh, very similar to my wife, I, I'd like to, uh, to see uh, the new building a reality, and I'm hoping I live long enough for that. But, more than that, it's the fact that we've had a good, faithful ministry here for 130 years, and now we have the chance to start a new ministry in, in a new location, and, uh, and yet the message never changes. So I look forward to that. So there have been a lot of changes, and uh, we think of then and we think of now, and just the contrast in uh, the location. 
And uh, it's so exciting to think that this new location that has been chosen for Oxford is directly north. I mean, it almost seems like it's right where it should be, and I believe it is. And uh, we anticipate great years ahead. And uh, I just think of the location of the new place uh, kind of in the country, but not far from town. And uh, I, I just am quite excited about that. I haven't been out to see the new sign yet, but I'm just wondering, you know, how excited I'll be when I do see it. And I, I know we've had our turn. It's kind of like a relay race. I just see that we were here years ago and got to meet the families and just love the people. We had to come back. And now to be part of it again and uh, looking forward to, with excitement about the next phase. We're gonna pass the baton on. And uh, same message going forth. And uh, it's just been a wonderful thing to look back on and see God in every step of the journey. Well, the new building, parking space, because we don't have enough car parking space. And uh, I I'm going to be sad to leave Oxford because it's been home for all these years. And, I, and the people are just, as you say, so wonderful and and so loving and uh, just it was just a perfect situation to me and uh, anyway in the new building i would like to see of course the more place for the cars and uh, nice comfortable seating and uh, let's see uh, what did I write down here? Oh yeah, no stairs. Why? And if if there was another, you know, an elevator would be great because Oxford never had it. And you know, when all of our people are getting older, it's hard for them to get up the stairs. So much as I hate to leave Oxford and have to see it torn down. Uh, I, uh, yes, I'm looking forward to a new church and, and it's a nice spot out there. And everything on one floor. And everything on one floor, yes. Comfortable chairs. You know, some of those old fashioned pews were not comfortable. <laughs> of course, if they're too comfortable, you might go to sleep. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's okay. going to be exciting. And I think about moving to a new location and I'm excited about what God has planned for us in a new building, a building that is safe and will be able to house all of us together so that we can worship as brothers and sisters in Christ and disciple to the greater community. Um, we're really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to the new church and making many more favorite memories. So let's look forward to this new build and more memories to come. What I'm most looking forward to with the new campus is of course, accessibility. And are you looking forward to the new church? I'm looking forward to the new church. And what about it are you looking forward to? Um, the, all our, all our kids and our old family and their, and, 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 and they get to do, and they get to, and the answering chairs, chair, our new, our church being new, and new stuff. Going forward, her prayer is our church family will feel his presence and those in our community will be drawn to him. We're looking forward to the new campus and watching our kids grow up there and all the memories that we're gonna to continue to be able to make as a family and as a church family. And our family looks forward to greeting and ushering um, and being part of the connecting team in the new church. I just wanna thank you all for joining us today. 
as we began this, the service with the scriptures and, and as we've heard from pastors to different people who have served in our church over the years, we have seen God's faithfulness. And we're so thankful for that. Those of us who are here now have a great responsibility to continue what God started back in 1890 as we move forward together, as we meet at the school for a few months, and uh, as we have office space at a, a like-minded church here in the city, we're so thankful for how God has provided for us. But we're looking forward to what God has in store for us. So let me just conclude us in prayer and thank you for joining us today. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the blessings of this church. The missionaries that we've been supporting for so many years, different ministries, Lord, and, and for what you've done in our lives as well. We just pray, Father, that you would continue to bless us, that we would walk like Jesus, that we would worship like Jesus, that we would be the living stones because we are connected to the rock of our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to our only God and Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, both now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah.